Hello, welcome and good afternoon to everyone. Thank you for spending some time with us today for this webinar on how to improve the ESD protection of high-speed CAN receivers and reduce PCB size up to 400%. Our speakers will be available to answer your questions at the end of this webinar. So if anything comes up, please don't hesitate to share it with us using the Q&A widget that you see at the bottom of your screen. We'll try and answer as many questions as possible. We will also like to invite you to discover all the other widgets that you see. There's a useful information in there. For example, you can already find the PDF of this presentation and some other useful links under the resource widget, which is the third one to your left. Also, if by any chance you miss out on some important points, no worries. All registrants will receive a post-event email with the link to the on-demand version of this webinar. Now, before we start, quickly some housekeeping information. You can expand your slide deck or maximize it to full screen by clicking in the top right corner. We also recommend using a wired internet connection and closing any programs or browser sessions that are running in the background, as webinars are bandwidth intensive. This webcast is being streamed through your computer, so there's no dial-in number. And for the best audio quality, please make sure your computer speakers or headset are turned on and the volume is up so you can hear the presenter. Additional answers to some common technical issues can be found under the help widget. This webinar will be recorded. All right, I think we're ready. Let's have a great webinar and let me hand over to our speakers. Good morning or good afternoon, everybody. My name is Jean Garcia from ST Microelectronics. I'm glad to go with you through this webinar concerning our CAN protection devices. Let's move to the agenda. First, we will review the basics of the CAN bus focusing on automotive applications, explain why protection devices are needed and how our ESD CAN series answers it. Then we will deeply dive in the criteria of the quality of protection and followed by the presentation of new miniature packages. Finally, we will provide tools and materials to select the right ESD CAN and conclude this webinar. Let's start with the CAN bus in a car. This diagram illustrates a domain control architecture. CAN links are very popular in powertrain, body, chassis, safety, and ADAS. This is a very mature and robust technology with an acceptable data rate, except maybe for the backbone links. Even in the new zonal architecture, CAN and CANFD are present, mainly for intrazone communications. The latest generations of automotive MCUs, ASICs, or SBCs embed CAN controllers and sometimes CAN transceivers. CAN bus is well known to have excellent error checking features and be very robust. On top of that, error recovery is fast and arbitration times are predictable. All of this make CAN bus particularly adapted to safety and critical functions in the car. Now let's see why you need to protect your CAN bus. The automotive industry is very demanding in terms of reliability and robustness, mainly when the electronic systems manage safety circuits. Standards like AECQ, ISO 26262 and AZIL criteria have been defined to guarantee a certain level of reliability and robustness. As CAN buses play a central role in the car, its components must comply with such standards. The SAE J2962-2, for example, gathering the requirements for CAN transceivers qualification, recommend to use protection devices for CAN transceivers, and even propose a test methodology and test setups with various protection options. Back to domain control architecture, as soon as a CAN node is defective, the ECU in charge of a specific function like ABS, airbags, ignition or anything else will not be able to communicate anymore with the domain controller unit, also called DCU. 
This will generate a defect with a red warning lamp appearing on the dashboard. Sometimes the car can even enter in a fail-safe mode, reducing the performances of the car on purpose to limit the risk of accidents. Now let me turn to Jean-Michel for a detailed description of the CAN bus. Hello everyone, my name is Jean-Michel Simonet. I'm based in Tours in France and I work in Application Lab. I'm in charge of protection in, in automotive segment, protection against uh, ESD and over voltage. Also in this part, uh, with a few slides, we will briefly describe the CAN bus. Controller Area Network CAN Protocol allows serial bidirectional half duplex multimaster communication between different ECU through a multiplex bus. And then the goal is to limit the number of wires. Each node is able to send and receive messages, but not in the same time. This protocol has been developed by Bosch in the 80s. Can communication use a differential signal and can reach several data speeds. For example, can high speed reach up to 1 megabit per second? Can fault tolerant up to 125 kilobit per second? And uh, this uh, standard can work in single wire in case of short circuit of one of differential wire. This is uh, used uh, for a truck because there are a long wire for this vehicle. And now for a few years, with the trend of mobility and electrification in the car, data is increasing, so speed is increasing too, with the CAN-FD, flexible data rate. In this, this uh, protocol reached up to five uh, megabit per second, and so there is also CAN-FD signal improvement capability uh, up to eight megabit per second. And now in development, uh, can XL protocol. And the goal uh, for this uh, protocol is to reach up to 10 megabit per second. Thanks to this protocol, a lot of electro electronics function can be embedded in cars without kilometers of wires. All can protocol are defined through ISO 11898-2 two for high speed standard on the flexible data rate, the dash three for default tolerant. For 30 years, this protocol shows its cost effective, its lightweight, its reliable transmission and safe. For sure, this uh, reliable is not link, only linked to the robustness of CAN transceiver, but also with this physical layer through uh, resistance termination, line uh, capacitors, uh, common mode shock, and of course, is CAN protection. CAN is used for all automotive segments as shown in the left figure, lighting, engine control, door zone, safety, and so on. According to the speed data, the number of nodes, the safety level, car domain or zonal architecture, several CAN networks can co-work in the same car. CAN transceiver allows the transfer of data between ECU and CAN bus with very good immunity even through harsh automotive environment. Ambient temperature can reach uh, 125 degrees C. There is uh, RF and uh, conductive perturbation. Uh, the wire lens can reach up to uh, 15 meters. Other constraints is linked to ESD discharge in case of, for example, uh, connector plugging or unplugging. The, if you want to repair the, the module or uh, replace it. CAN transceiver has its own ESD withstanding, but it is not enough for some levels standard required. To reinforce the robustness against ESD, ESD can is placed between connector or CAN transceiver. To transfer data on CAN bus between the different ECU, there are several signal transformation steps. For example, from sensor input signals and after data processing by MCU or other IC, 
So the signal here is called TXD. The CAN transceiver transform it in differential signal between CAN H and CAN L. In the other direction, the CAN transceiver transform CAN differential signal in data compatible reading by MCU. Between CAN transceiver and connector, usually common mode shock is used to reject the common mode signal. Resistance termination with or without split capacitor are used for filtering noise. Data line capacitors are also used to reinforce the filtering and ESD CAN protection against ESD are connected. This part is called MDI, Media Dependent Interface, as we will see in the next slide with Jean. Thank you, Jean-Michel. To properly understand the scope of CAN standards, we have to go back to the seven-layer ISO model. From the hardware point of view, only the physical layer and the data link layer are interesting. The physical layer itself is divided into three sublayers. The first sublayer, called physical media dependent or PMD, corresponds to the connector and wires from the hardware point of view. The CAN standards do not define this part, which is highly specific to the application. The connector can be a DB9, an OBD2, or anything else, and the pins assignment for these connectors are free as well. The second sublayer, called physical media attachment, or PMA, is the one defining the CAN transceiver or the CAN phi characteristics at the hardware level. The CAN standards ISO 11898-2 for CAN high speed and ISO 11898-3 for CAN fault tolerant are the two standards that we will detail in the next slides. The CAN FD or flexible data rate is compliant with the ISO 11898-2 CAN high speed standard. For the sake of simplification, we will not discuss here the purpose of each sublayer or detail other ISO or SAE standards related to CAN. If you want to know more, you can download the product presentation named CAN Burst Protection STESD CAN series on st.com. We will share the link with you at the end of this webinar. Now let me turn to Jean-Michel. If we discuss in more details about high speed and low speed physical layer, ISO 11898 gives different information. As already discussed, the maximum data rate is different, of course. The maximum uh, wire length in automotive, the maximum is 15 meters, but as CAN protocol is used in industrial segment, the length can be higher. 30 meters for high speed and 500 meters for low speed. The termination resistance has different values according to high speed or low speed. The value of this resistance gives the voltage level for recessive voltage on dominant voltage. This is why the level are different between both CAN protocol. As CAN network is multi-master, if several ECU talk in, at the same time, in the arbitration frame, the number of bits in dominant level gives the node priority. In this part, we'll discuss the main surge or accidental DC overvoltage we can find in automotive standards. For ESD description, ISO 10605 is defined for automotive segment, but IEC 61000-4-2 for industrial segment is still a reference for care makers. These ESD constraints are defined for the whole system, not for the IC alone, on this ESD standards are more stressful than HBM or CDM stress. Our ESD can protection family 
he tested alone to guarantee a good behavior for all system. The robustness is up to 30 kV. Another important parameter is the clamping voltage during ESD surge. We'll talk about this after. Another standard is for the surges. ISO 7637-3 for slow and fast result is a well-known pulses automotive standard for data lines. There is no battery prop. This standard explains that a part of surge on bus battery is supplied by coupling on data line. ESD can families products are tested for fast and slow transient. Another type of stress is defined in ISO 16750. It defines two DC voltage stress. First one, jump start. So you can apply up to 24 volts or more as uh, some uh, chemicals define higher value. Also, there is a reverse battery. Here you can apply minus 14 volts for car system or minus 28 volts for truck system. Of course, SD can has to withstand the stress and this is the case. Few explanation to ISO 10605 ESD standards. This standard considers three cases in case of assembly, repair or replacement of electronics module coal, component packaging and handling test. ESD is applied directly on relevant pins accessible by tools or hands. To the vehicle, there is two cases with both feet inside the car during the test and with less one foot outside the car during the test. ESD is applied on each point accessible by one person using the vehicle. As mentioned on slide, switches, display surfaces, steering lock, controls, antenna and so on have to be tested. For each test configuration, ISO 10605 defines contact and or air discharge. The RC ESD gun value is defined. So there is four RC possibilities. The most successful is 330 ohm with 330 picofarad. Another one is 330 ohm with 150 picofarad. 2 kilo ohm with 150 picofarad and 2 kilo ohm with 330 picofarad. In comparison with IEC 61000-4-2, there is only one RC value defined by 150 picofarad with 330 ohm. The voltage level is also suggested in ISO 10605 according to the different situation. Here are details on ISO 7637-3 fast transients, also called fast pulses 3A and 3B. These repetitive positive and negative pulses are applied by coupling on data lines due to bounces of relay opening or closing on battery bus, for example. Pulse duration is very short. Around 150 nanoseconds, rest time very fast, 5 nanoseconds. And peak voltages are also suggested with tables B1 and B2 for car system and truck system. If we look at the voltage value, tables give different voltage levels according to the category of application. The maximum voltage is plus or minus 150 volts for truck system. Three different methods can be used to simulate the coupled voltage. Capacitive coupling clamp method, as shown on picture, is only used for fast, not for slow transient. Harness is placed inside the metallic clamp and transient pulses defined in standard are applied on this metallic clamp for 10 minutes. 
Direct capacitive coupling method consists to apply transient pulses to the duct through a capacitor in series. For fast transient, the value of this capacitor is 100 picofarad. For slow transient, capacitor value is 100 nanofarad. Inductive coupling clamp method is only used for slow transient. RNS is placed inside the injection probe and transient pulses defined in standard are applied on this injection probe. After test, the DUT has to be operational. ESD can product will protect circuits against these repetitive pulses, which could occur failures. As shown on waveform extracted of ESD can O3-2BM3Y, tests have been applied on ESD can alone according the direct capacity coupling method with US plus or minus 150 volts. Pulses are clamped around plus or minus 35 volts, which is lower than the usual absolute maximum breathing for automotive and truck integrated circuits. In each ESD CAN datasheet, waveform shows the robustness of the CAN protection. In the same way, slow transient, also called slow positive or negative pulses 2A, are defined in ISO 7637-3. Duration is longer, around 50 microseconds, and last time that's 1 microsecond. The transients are repetitive. The voltage level is fixed to plus or minus 45 volts, but some customers want higher value, plus or minus 85 volts, for example. As for fast transient, each ESD can datasheet has response to this stress for US, plus or minus 85 volts. Voltage remaining is around plus or minus 35 volts, and we can see cold waveform through ESD CAN. These tests have been performed in DCC method. There is an example on this slide for the ESD CAN O3-2BM3Y. Now let's talk about Jumpstart for 12 system. This Jumpstart is linked to a back connection of an auxiliary battery in series with a flat battery or a garage battery booster with a bad voltage selection connected to power a car with no battery or a truck battery connected to power car to start the engine. In these different cases, 24 volts given by ISO 16750 or more according to car maker internal standards, for example, 26 volts, 27 volts, is applied on the whole system. Not only ECU or all circuits have to withstand this overvoltage, but also the protection ESD can. Standard explains that you have to test all relevant points with this same start voltage for one minute. Once again, the reverse battery is linked to a back connection. For example, when an auxiliary battery is used on, with a bad connection, a reverse connection, or a battery to the car power net is reconnected with bad connection, or the car power net is repairing. There is some trouble to reconnect junction boxes and so on. In these different cases, minus 14 volts given by ISO 16.7 5O is applied on the whole system and of course on the ESD CAN 2. This protection has to withstand the stress. Thank you, Jean-Michel. Now let's have a look on our ESD CAN portfolio. Here is a graphical presentation of our ESD CAN portfolio. The X axis is the minimum breakdown voltage. On the left side, in light gray, you can find the lower breakdown voltages for 12 volts battery vehicles like passenger cars. On the right side, in dark gray, you have the higher breakdown voltage for 24 volts battery vehicles like trucks or off-road vehicles, for example. The y-axis is the line capacitance. The lower, the faster data rate. So the bottom part of the graph is particularly interesting for high-speed CAN and CAN FD. You can see that we offer three packages, SOT23, roughly 
3 by 3 square millimeter. Sot 323, roughly 2 by 2 square millimeter. And DFN 1110, roughly 1 by 1 square millimeter. You may notice that for 12 volt systems, we offer two flavors of breakdown voltage. One that fits with the 24 volts jump start voltage plus 10% tolerance so around 26.5 volts for car makers sticking to ISO 16750 standard. And another one here for car makers requiring jump start compatibility with higher tolerance up to 27 or 28 volts. This requirement is not normative but more specific to each car maker. Now we will discuss the quality of the protection. Protection must be complied with standard constraints as jump start, reverse battery and so on, but also protection must be robust against different ESD and surge stress levels, and this without degradation and often at high temperature. The efficiency of a protection is measured by its ability to clamp over voltage on over currents with the lowest clamping voltage as possible. If the remaining voltage is too high, there is a risk to degrade the IC to protect. Transmission line pulse, TLP, allows to characterize this remaining voltage and then check and compare the efficiency of the protection. Now let's focus on ESD protection quality. The key parameter is the ESD response to an electrostatic discharge of 8,000 volts. As example shown, ESD 051-1BF4 temporal response is presented. There are two noticeable values. The first one is the peak voltage at beginning of the response. It is low energy peak due to its duration of few nanoseconds. Here the voltage value of this first peak is 23 volts. The second is the clamping voltage defined at 30 nanoseconds. It's 11 volts for this product. It's much more energetic due to the duration. This temporal response at 8 kV is usually reported on datasheet because it corresponds to the standard IEC 61000-4-2 level 4. As ESD response is noisy and not repetitive from an ESD gun to another one, an alternative characterization method has been developed, transmission line pulse TLP. So to perform ESD analysis and comparison, it is better to use TLP. A square voltage pulse of 100 nanoseconds is applied across the protection, and the remaining voltage on the current values has then measured between 70% and 90% of the incident pulse duration. For ESD 051-1BF4 with 16 amps current level, the TLP voltage is 10.5 volts. Here is comparison between ESD response with 8 kV with RC gun equal to 330 ohm on 150 picofarad and the TLP remaining voltage. TLP remaining is around 10.5 volt, which is about the 10.9 volt clamping voltage measured at 30 nanoseconds for ESD response. With several pulses at various current values, it is possible to make a TLP current voltage curve. As example, ESD 051-1BF4 TLP current voltage curve is presented. The horizontal axis gives the measured TLP voltage for a given TLP current. The left vertical axis gives TLP current level. This TLP current is equivalent to the current level measured at 30 nanoseconds when applying an ESD charge based on ISO 10605 or IEC 61000 4 2, and this with RCSD gun equal to 
330 ohms on 150 picofarad. The, the equivalence with the ISO 10605 surge voltage is given on the right vertical axis. The value of the equivalent clamping voltage is then easily to obtain. Instead of standard ESD protection shown in green TLP current voltage curve, snackback ESD protection can be used with features shown by red TLP current voltage curve. Snackback protection presents lower clamping voltage than standard protection thanks to the snackback effect that lowers the clamping once the protection has turned on. At 16 ohms, ESDZV5-1BF4 presents a clamping voltage nearly 2 volts lower than ESD051-1BF4. If there is a DC voltage applied on the line to protect, this DC voltage must be lower than holding voltage of the snackback ESD protection. Indeed, if a DC voltage is higher than holding voltage or if ESD event is present, the protection will turn on or the current coming from the DC voltage source will flow continuously into the protection. The protection will then remain lashed. If there is no DC voltage or if the DC voltage is lower than holding voltage, there is no latch risk. ESD series, the robustness is very high, high ESD level is up to 30 kV. The robustness is also done for well-known 820 microsecond exponential surge with high current level up to 5.5 ohms. On as shown by TAP current voltage characteristic, the clamping voltage is low and in particular for ESD can 3 2 bm 3 y the shallow snackback allows to get better clamping voltage even for high current. Standard CSD surges on other threads are usually specified for room temperature, but automotive segment has a harsh environment, and in particular for ambient temperature range. So a high robustness for the whole range of temperature is important to guarantee a good protection behavior. Yes, can series show low dating for APP even for a high temperature as shown by graph. Even for the maximum junction temperature 175 degrees C, IPP value remains high on this for the whole ESD can series. Thank you, Jean-Michel. Now let's see our latest miniature ESD can housed in DFN 1110. So, why a new member in the ESD CAN series? First, the new electronics architecture of the course is requiring what we can call smart ECUs like domain controller units or vehicle computer units. Second, the growth of ADAS and autonomous driving features is multiplying the number of inputs of the ECUs and is making the latency time more critical. The latency time can be decreased by using high-speed data lines and high computing level or data processing on the ECU itself. The consequence is a dramatic increase of the PCB density generating big headaches for automotive designers. The space turns to be critical. The layout stage becomes more and more complex because the high number of components makes the PCB routing painful. It is sometimes impossible to keep the PCB metal tracks short and far enough each other to avoid parasitic effects. Preserving the symmetry in the PCB metal tracks of a differential high-speed link is getting really difficult as well. The components and metal lines being closer from each other, any transient occurring on the line will easily couple to other nearby lines. And to make it even more touchy, the core ICs, managing high-speed signals or data processing at high frequency, are made with the latest and thinnest technologies, more vulnerable to any of our voltages or ESD hazards. So to simplify this complexity, we had to develop a new ESD can housed in a much smaller package with a very low parasitic capacitance. 
When a designer or a layout expert asks, for example, a 30 picofarad total capacitance budget on a CAN link, and that the CAN transceiver protection only picks 3 picofarad instead of 15, it drastically releases the constraints on the layout. The circuits being more sensitive and vulnerable to transients and ESD, the big challenge for us was to lower the clamping voltage to make the protection even more efficient while keeping this low capacitance. All of this was the driver and the value proposition of our ESDCAN 03-2 PM3Y. A smaller package, a better clamping voltage, and no compromise on the line capacitance budget. As a result, the space benefit is significant against legacy SOT23 and SOT323 packages. With the new ESDCAN 03-2 BM3Y in DFN 1110, you cut the size by 4 compared to SOT323 and even by 9 compared to SOT23. The solder joint inspection of a PCB is a very common practice in the automotive industry. Making sure that the components are properly soldered avoid early life failures in the field. So the PCBs are automatically inspected by cameras able to control the solder joints. DFN packages are very efficient for miniaturization as we have seen before. However, as the pads are located in the bottom of the package, they cannot be inspected by camera vision. The way to make DFN packages compatible with Automatic Optical Inspection, or AOI, is to implement side wettable flanks. Side wettable flanks will expose the solder fillet and make Automatic Optical Inspection possible even on DFN packages. Now, let's spend some time on the available tools to select and design the right ESD CAN. The purpose of this slide is to guide you to select the CAN protection that best fits your application. By answering five simple questions, you will get the right part number. First question, is it for cars or trucks? Second, which package do you want? Third, low speed CAN or high speed CAN? Fourth, 26 volt jump start or 28 volt jump start? And fifth, what is the most critical in your design or project? The search level, so you are looking for high robustness ESD CAN, the capacitance budget, then you will need low capacitance ESD CAN, or the CAN transceiver weakness, so you have to select a low clamping voltage ESD CAN. And that's it. Technical resources allow to get different usual digital tools. 3D models can model the mechanical constraints on placement. Symbol and simulation models can be used for electronic design and simulation. Footprint is available for ease of layout drawing. Where do you find these tools? On ST Web with four steps. First, access to st.com site. Second, select one device with its part number. Third, CAD resources are now available. <laughs> Fourth, select the tool you want and download files. That's done. It's now time to conclude this webinar. Let's review the four key benefits of our ESDCAN series. First, the flexibility of the portfolio covering most of customers' needs, cars, trucks, jumpstart specifics, and so on. Second, the integration with the new small DFN 1110. Third, the simplification of the design and layout thanks to low parasitic capacitance. And last one, the immunity achieved with the very low clamping voltage. And all these products are part of the 10 years longevity program. This last slide gathers all the relevant technical information concerning our ESDCAN series. Application note, evaluation board, SPICE models, CAD resources, 
the canvas protection presentation we mentioned previously, and much more. This is the end of this webinar. Thank you very much for your time and attention. We hope that you enjoyed it. And now we'll be pleased to answer your questions. All right, so after this great webinar, we're now ready for a Q&A session with uh, Jean and Jean-Michel. So let's have a look at these uh, questions that have been coming in. Um, let me kick off with our first question. So why do we qualify ESD CAN up to 175 degrees Celsius? It is an ambient temperature in a car or commercial vehicle. Okay. Uh, Jean Garcia speaking. Uh, let me take this uh, this question. Uh, yes, you are. You, are, you it's it can be a little bit strange to think about 175 degrees C because actually there is no really uh, uh, application running on 175 degrees C uh, in the in the car. However, um, when you have uh, some repetitive surges or, or strikes occurring on the vehicle, uh, you have to calculate average power. Uh, of the of the surge and uh, having 175 degrees C uh, instead of 150 degrees C as a maximum junction temperature gives you more room uh, to uh, to address this uh, this surge. This is the first point, and the second point it means that uh, we have qualified the product at 175 degrees C. We did perform all the reliability tests at 175 degrees C. And so we have a level of quality which is higher than with uh, 150 degrees C. And we can cover mission profiles uh, which are more stringent uh, without having to perform extra reliability tests to cover a specific mission profile from a customer. All we right, thank you, Jean. Uh, let's go to our next question. Are the ESD CAN compatible with FlexRay? Okay, I can take this one as well. Um, yes, the ESD CAN family, and particularly the low capacitance ESD CAN, like ESD CAN 02 and ESD CAN 03, uh, are uh, well fitted for the flex ray. And uh, even more, uh, we do think that the, the next generation of CAN protocols, like uh, CAN uh, XL, uh, can be covered by this uh, ESD CAN uh, as well. Next question. Yes, our next question is coming from Yunan. Um, why is the 120 ohm termination for low speed con not necessary? Um, Jean-Michel speaking, I take it. So the standard explains that for low, uh, low speed, the serial resistance is 2.2 kilo ohm in series. So it's different from high speed. Usually, this, uh, this, uh, this uh, value is, is following, so I suppose it's uh, mandatory to, to get this, uh, this uh, value, this resistance. All right, thank, thank you, you. Jean-Michel. Um, our next question, count protocol is differential. What about the matching between the two lines? It's for me, yes. yes. So, uh, it's about the, the capacitance, the value of the capacitance, the delta of capacitance. Each uh, ESD can is specified with this delta capacitance. So it's very low. Um, and like this, with only one package, we can uh, manage the, the protection with a very good uh, matching. All right, thank, thank you. you. Our next. Yes, I will go to our next question. So some car makers require CAN protection devices to be part of their own approval list. Are ST ESD CAN protection part of the car makers approval list? Oh, okay, I take this question. Uh, yes, uh, you are right. Um, to implement uh, a CAN protection on a device, most of the time, the, the CAN protection uh, must be approved by uh, some of the OEM, some of the car makers. And uh, so, yes, our ESD CAN series uh, have been approved by, uh, by car makers. 
Next question. All right, thank you. Our next question, um, let me see. Why have SD card protection devices such low capacitance as can data rate is not that fast? Okay, yes, yes. Uh, okay, I can I can answer this uh, this question. The idea uh, to provide so uh, low capacitance is to uh, preserve the capacitance budget of all the CAN line, uh, including the CAN transceivers and all the components uh, which are part of the of the CAN line. Uh, and so, uh, if, if you if you have a thirty picofarads of uh, capacitance budget and we only pick three picofarads with our CAN protection. You have plenty of room uh, for the layout and to choose and to select any kind of components that you want on the on the can lines. That's the reason why we try to lower as much as possible uh, the the can protection capacitance. All right. Our next question from Enrica: Are ESD can protections compatible with load dump surges? Um, load dump. Uh, take it. The dump is only for uh, bus battery uh, components. So uh, here in the case, <coughs> there is only this bus battery who, which need to be protected against this uh, over, over stress. All right, uh, thank you. Have we... Uh, we done about this, uh, this question? The dump is zero energetic, so for sure, you need to, to, to protect with a high TDS uh, capability. So here, ESD can alone now it's not possible to withstand the, the load dump. I finish, thank you. All right, I'll go to our next question. And it's a question that I've seen a couple of times. Where can I get a PDF of this presentation? So let me answer that one. A PDF of this presentation is already available under the resource widget at the bottom of your screen under the third tab from your left. And all registrants will also receive a post-event email with the link to the on-demand version of this webinar. And uh, we will also add once again the PDF of this presentation. Okay, let's answer a couple of questions at once. So then we go to our next question. Are other components of CAN data lines like termination resistors or capacitators robust enough versus ESD? Uh, take it. Um, as ESD CAN is plugged near the connector, of course, this uh, ESD CAN protection protects CAN transceiver, but also other components. After repetitive ESD stress, the resistance, the termination, termination resistance or uh, capacitance can uh, evaluate. So with the uh, ESD can protection, the, the matching uh, remains good in the life. Thank you. All right. So it uh, looks like this last question will bring us to the end of this webinar. As mentioned earlier, all registrants will receive a post-event email with the link to the on-demand version of this webinar, as well as additional resources. And the PDF is available under the resource widgets, and that is the third one to your left. And if someone you know or yourself are interested in pursuing a career with ST, we are currently hiring, and more details can be found in the career widget, also at the bottom of your screen, and that would be the second one to your left. So thank you again for attending our webinar today. We hope you enjoyed it and were able to take away some useful information. Also, a thank you to those of you who took the time to answer our survey. And of course, a big thank you to our speakers, Jean and Jean-Michel, for making this webinar possible. Please stay safe, and we hope you come back soon. Goodbye. Goodbye. Bye. Thanks. Thanks.